guys, welcome back. Today I finally get to have a look at this beauty right here. Unfortunately I will not be picking this lock in this video because I've tried to pick that lock and I have not been successful in doing so. Uh, those of you who took part in my one year UK lock sports pass around um, would have had the opportunity to try and pick this core and a lot of you struggled uh, to pick it. And that's a miniature triple eight core. Um, so you can imagine what it's like with the full size triple eight core. It is not easier. Um, so uh, this is the Abus eighty three AL forty five series two, and um, so today we're going to have a look at some of its features. What makes it different from the Abus eighty three forty five? Um, we won't go into all the features of this lock, like the Z bar and that, because I've already done that, and I don't want to bore you guys to death. Um, I want to first of all thank Tony S for sending this lock to me. Uh, these locks are very hard to come by. Uh, you have to get them from either America or Australia, and I think Tony got this one from America. Um, and I don't know why, but I don't think I've ever seen an aluminium padlock in use in the UK. Um, I think they're a lot more common in the US. Um, certainly American locks and pack lock and all them brands make them. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure why this lock is only available in the US. Um, so first of all, uh, the first difference you'll notice is of course the uh, body is different. This one is made of aluminium and it's anodized blue and uh, that does not actually change the security level according to ABUS. It's still level 8. Um, I think this is ABUS's special alloy, titanium, which they call titanium. It's a uh, combination of aluminium and titanium, although, although they don't actually say so on the box itself. They just say that it's ultra light and it's a color anodized aluminium lock body. Um, so I'm not sure, I assume that means that it's lighter than um, than the brass one. Uh, it's still quite heavy, um, but not as heavy as this lock right here. Uh, okay, so um, that's what makes it different from the, the uh, Abus 83 slash 45. The AL stands for aluminium. I'm sure you figured that much out. Um, the next thing is the core. The core is made of, or rather it's the triple eight uh, core, which is a very special core made by Abus. Here's a key, and this key is actually very large. I, I quite like the key um, because of its size. As you can see, it's huge, and uh, you can really get a lot of um, leverage on it. It's, uh, it says do not duplicate. I'm not sure how that system works. I'm not sure if you get a code card with uh, the key. Uh, I certainly didn't. This is all I got. I only got one key. Um, so I don't know how you get more keys. Uh, if you don't know about the triple eight core, it spells out ABUS, A-B-U-S, and um, it's a really nice core. Um, we're going to have a look at this in just a minute. Uh, I want to note that the key is kind of hard to get in there sometimes because of all the crazy warding, but that's okay. Of course the lock operates nice and smoothly. This is not key retaining because it doesn't, this one doesn't have the uh, Z bar in it. Um, that also didn't come with the lock, I'm not sure um, if it did have one at one point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this screw right here which will enable us to remove the core. Have a look inside. Nothing too fancy, just that we don't have a Z bar in this uh, particular lock. Those could be easily obtain obtained, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure. Um, so here's a core. Um, it says 83 Series 2 on it, and triple eight on the front. So uh, this is obviously quite different from the uh, standard 500 core that comes in most of these uh, locks if you get them from the UK. Um, 
first of all, the material it's made of. I'm not actually quite sure. I think it's possibly aluminium. Uh, it could be brass with... Um, in fact, looking in this hole, it looks sort of like it's brass, so probably brass with some sort of a plating uh, or a finish. Um, it works nice and smooth, of course. Uh, let me just press in. We do still have some brass uh, parts on the back of this lock. So let me press in this pin here. And that will allow me to show you right here. This is a full six pin core, which is um, quite unusual uh, for an Abus 83. Usually they come with six cha chambers and only uh, five pins. Note that they are also brass pins. Uh, there you go. Now you can just about see some drill protection there. I'll have a look at that in a second. And also we have the uh, the hole for constru uh, construction keying, which um, I, I hope I will be able to uh, look at sometime in the future. Um, so I guess let's gut this lock. Unfortunately, I'm not the first person to be able to show this lock in a video. I think the lockpicking lawyer was the first, uh, followed by the lockpicking patrolman. Um, so hopefully one day I'll be able to pick this lock. And uh, yeah, I hope this won't be the last time you see it. Um, let me take the clip off. It's always a fun bit. There we go. I've lost it down there. Cool. So we take this bit off as well. And we disassemble it very carefully, making sure that we do not get that pin stuck. Okay, I just want to make sure I know where it is, and then we'll get the plug follower on the go. You. That went all right. Uh, let me grab a core holder and we'll zoom in a bit. Okay. So here's the core. I've already showed you that. That's six pin. And if I can get the key back into it, uh, we have two steel drill uh, protection pins there which we do not get in the standard 500 series core. Uh, so Abus were certainly not sparing any uh, any of their technology on this core right here. And I've already showed you the hole there for construction keying and the pin, of course. Uh, so I'll set that to one side and we'll have a look at the top section of the core, which again has some drill protection on either side of the uh, of the core there. I'm not sure why they don't put a, a pin right in the front there uh, since that's where people are most likely to drill. Um, so let's get a pair of tweezers and we'll cut this thing for us. Oh. Okay so the first one is a standard brass pin. Second one is a spool. I'm not expecting anything other than spools from now on. So, if we can get some focus going. I'm actually looking at this through the camera so I keep everything in frame. But it's a little bit awkward. Oops. We've got a spring. We've got a few springs. We may as well take them out. Another spool and whoops. <laughs> There's not enough room on my pinning tray. Let me shuffle everything a bit. There we go. Knock out the springs. I don't see anything too magical in there. I should be using I should get into the habit of using this. Um yeah, that's definitely a brass core in there. You can see where it's worn away. Um right there. Okay, so let me just put these springs into place and then we'll 
give you an overview of the pins. So we have a standard pin in um, chamber one. Let me grab um, a small black backdrop, and here we go. Uh, so this is a slightly serrated pin. This isn't helping at all, is it? Okay, sorry about that guys. It might just be the leather. Nope. Uh, you can just about see there's some serrations on there. I really want to show you these serrations. Oh, you saw them for a few seconds there. There you go. Tiny little serrations. I don't know if they have an effect on picking. Um, and the rest of the pins are of course spools, which does make it quite tricky. Along with the, um, where is it gone? Along with the keyway. Um, which I just want to show you for the last time here. And of course all the key pins are standard, so I won't show those to you. So overall, a very, very nice lock. A very beautiful uh, lock as well. I want to thank uh, Tony S for sending this to me. and uh, Please check out his channel. Um, this lock has been in my very special display cabinet for only very special locks. So uh, that's how much I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, it's been a pleasure to show you this lock on camera. Hopefully this won't be, as I mentioned earlier, the last time you see this lock um, on camera. Hopefully I'll get to pick this sometime in the future. Um, at the end of this video, there will be something a little bit different. I am going to, uh, from now on, have an outro at the end of my videos. Uh, this will basically, uh, over on the left hand side, there will be a round um, button that you can click with my logo, where you can subscribe to my channel. And over on the right hand side, there will be a video, which is my most recently uploaded video. Um, this is probably going to change sometime in the future, but um, for now that's what I've got. Um, and if any of you guys uh, want to create logos or um, intros or outros for my channel, uh, please send me an email, hobbypicker at gmail.com. Uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to sort of um, make better videos, uh, get some good editing on the go there. And, um, uh, yeah, we're just gradually getting there. Uh, don't expect the sort of uh, Bosnian build different intro every single video, but uh, as I'm sure you've noticed, I do have two intros that I, I sort of uh, swap between them. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching, um, and as always, I'll see you in my next video.